Right, so, the Labour vote rigging scandal rumbles on another day, rumbles on some more. And we're back to Croydon East this time, where the whole incident began, where the police are now carrying out an investigation. Because incredibly, after the General Assembly candidate selection for Croydon and Sutton had to be abandoned as part of the original alleged corruption there back in November of last year, that selection has now been carried out again. It was actually carried out some two weeks ago before news of the police investigation came out. Yet incredibly, Labour have chosen to use the Anonymous Voter online voting system, the very system blamed for either being corrupt or being open to being corrupted, to carry out this vote again. One of the candidates, as regular viewers of this channel will know, and others who are following this story might well know as well, is the co-owner of the Anonymous Voter system, and incredibly, unbelievably, the Anonna voter owner has just won the Anonna voter vote to become Labour's candidate for the London General Assembly. Right, so can you Adam and Eve it? It's incredible, isn't it? Who saw it coming? The owner of the voting system Labour used nationwide to select candidates remotely via online voting has been picked by their own system to be a Labour candidate for the London General Assembly. Now, for all we know, there has been no untoward interference in this particular vote at all. However, there might be because the system is now massively, widely distrusted. And I can imagine the guy who was running against Maddie Henson of Henson IT Solutions, owners of Anonymous Voter, the chap called Martin Welton, might well be as aggrieved as others I've covered in other videos, who clearly are, the likes of MPs like Sam Tarry and Beth Winter, blaming the Anonymous Voter system, at least in part, for rigging the votes, rigging certain election results in favour of those Keir Starmer and his faction once selected. However, there may well be justifiable reason to surmise that something is afoot again here. And once again, it is inside Croydon who are covering this matter most closely, because no matter which way you paint it, it would appear that Mrs Henson is not particularly popular. She's been a councillor since 2014, and one of the reasons she isn't best liked, perhaps, is that she's one of a group of councillors colloquially referred to, in, certainly by inside Croydon at least, as Newman's numpties. This is a reference to the former council leader, Tony Newman, who oversaw Croydon Council become, well, only the second council in 20 years, back in 2020, to become bankrupt. At the time, it had a £67 million black hole in its budget. A projected overspend for the following year of £47 million had just £10 million left in reserves. Yet they were holding nearly £2 billion worth in capital loans, much of which had been tied up in risky property investment, apparently. So the council went bust in no small part due to bad investments. Well, Newman quit over this. The council got bailed out. The Tories took charge. The council went bankrupt again in 2022. There's a two cheeks of the same R story there, if ever there was one. Anyway, those loyal to Newman throughout that time have been referred to as Newman's numpties, and Henson was one of these councillors. Newman was, incidentally, the link between a non-voter owners, Maddie Henson, and her husband, Mark, and Labour Party General Secretary David Evans too. Whether this has anything to do with Labour adopting a non-voter without tender and without the sign-off of Labour Party National Executive Committee, well, that's for the police to find out as things stand, isn't it? At any rate, the election has gone ahead again for the Greater London Authority, carried out, out on a non-voter, only on a non-voter in this case, and even though this was before we publicly got wind of the police investigation commencing, Labour obviously already knew the system was being blamed. Proven or not, it wasn't trusted. For the corruption that saw candidate selection uh, abandoned last November. So why is it being used anywhere in the country still, frankly, right now, let alone in Croydon, which is home to an honour voter, and especially when one of the candidates in this particular selection is one of the owners of an honour voter? In fact, it's even worse than that. Because Labour had admitted just the week before this selection vote that they had found evidence of deliberate tampering with membership data in Croydon East. Unbelievably, though, this gets even more stupid and even more dodgy yet. You see, there were only two candidates standing for this selection to the GLA, Maddie Henson and Martin Welton. But voters might have been surprised to have seen three names on there because Henson's name was actually on there twice. Once as a candidate and a second time as the owner of the supplier of the online voting system. She had it there in black and white. This is my system. You're using it to vote for, well, me, perhaps. Also, when voting is finished, it obviously takes time to have that counted. You need to have checks and verification take place. Even when you are using an electronic system, there has to be some due diligence. Yet, strangely enough, 
It took just 25 minutes after the deadline for voting passed for the result to come through and announce that Henson had won it. Voting was being conducted across two boroughs here. That's bloody quick, don't you think? So what was the result then, Davo? Well, funny you should ask. We don't know. We have no idea, conveniently, because London Labour, them again, has failed to provide any tally associated with this vote. A democratic vote selection, and yet members who voted can't see for themselves what the results were, what the vote was, which has just raised suspicion still even further. Inside Croydon cites a number of people who commented following this result in their coverage. In her own publicity material sent out to Labour members across the two boroughs, Henson made great play of how she was a key member of Val Shawcross's campaign team for Croydon Mayor in 2022, when with Labour holding a stonking lead in national opinion polls in Croydon, they still lost. After Hanson's selection was announced today, one respected member of the local party said, I'm not suggesting any anonymous voter funny business, but I don't know anyone in Croydon that voted for Maddie. How the hell did she get the GLA gig? Another said, Maddie's a member of the Newman Numpties, the councillors who bankrupted the borough and who are supposed to be banned from being candidates for higher office. So how was it considered appropriate for her to be allowed to go forward here? A third Labour member in Croydon simply said, effing hell, I despair. Others pointed to the strange phrasing of the announcement made by London Labour and wanted to know what the voting figures were for the two candidates and for those who chose to abstain. I reckon abstain was an outstanding winner, said one cynic. Perhaps that is precisely why London Labour haven't published the results. Perhaps turnout was so low as to bring the democracy of the vote into question itself, especially when they had their chosen option, as seems to be the case if indeed it is true that those associated with the Newman administration, as Newman loyalists, his numpties, are supposedly banned from standing for higher office. But this would just be one more example of a candidate rigging accusation under the Starmer regime. The GLA seat for Croydon and Sutton has been held by the Tories for years. Labour have never won it, and after this, well, I would suggest are even less likely to. But equally, even if it is the deposing of a Tory, which should always be celebrated, it wouldn't be much of a celebration to see, well, one numpty replaced by another sort of numpty, would it? Meanwhile, if you'd like to find out how much further reaching things have got with this story now, what has been said by those two MPs who are now blaming the system for their deselections and the actions they're taking, check out this video recommendation here. I'll be following this story some more going forwards. There are many questions Labour needs to answer about its use of this system, not least why they are still using it even now, which is still happening it seems, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers folks.